Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Vijay. I'm a software engineer on Project Aria. And uh, today I'll be demonstrating how easy it is to use the Project Aria open tool set. At a high level, um, we'll be running code in Python in a Jupyter notebook. Uh, we will see how easy it is to open an Aria VRS file and uh, examine the data in it. Then we will switch gears and uh, try to load some of the MPS output that Jacob uh, talked about. And then in the end, we'll try to use the uh, ARIAS calibration APIs to put everything together. Um, so here's the first notebook. Uh, the goal here is to see how easy it is to load a VRS file and examine uh, the data inside it. So the first cell is boring, a whole bunch of imports. Uh, I've already run pip install project ARIA tools um, inside this virtual environment. Matplotlib. And we'll be using uh, the ARIA pilot data set, one of the sequences from ARIA pilot data set today for the demonstration. Now, this cell shows how to reopen a VRS file and examine data in it. So we create a data provider. That's your go-to place for re uh, uh, reading anything from uh, a VRS file. Uh, once you create the provider, we get all the streams in the VRS file. And then what we're doing here is if it's a camera stream, then we print the stream ID, camera name, and the frame rate. Otherwise, we just print the stream IDs. And towards the end, we read the RGB frame, a, a random RGB frame, and then use good old matplotlib to show the image. So let's see what we got here. The stream IDs, stream names, and the frame rate. Uh, eye tracking camera, RGB, and so on. And here's one of the images from the stream. Uh, just a few lines of code to get going. OK. Uh, this is good, but uh, let's make it more fun. Um, first time I ever record, anytime I record a VRS file, I want to see what's in it. Not just one image, but like everything in it. So for the remainder of the um, demonstration today, we'll be using this tool called rerun. Uh, that is great at visualizing uh, data. And then uh, we'll be sending data to it through uh, the ARIA as uh, a project ARIA tools APIs. OK, so here we create uh, an RR instance, the rerun instance, and then we set the we set some uh, options on the data provider. Essentially, we are truncating the first 48 seconds and the last 288 seconds and just stream the middle, because that's where the interesting content is. And uh, we, again, start the streaming from the VRS file, we get the timestamp, and then uh, we just draw it. We basically, if it's a camera image, if it's, a, if it's an image data, then we draw it. And if it's a sensor data, we plot it. So let's see what happens. OK, there. OK, this is in device time. And here, what we are seeing here is slam camera feed, RGB camera feed, IMU, uh, eye tracking camera, everything in one place, um, just just with a few lines of code. Um, notice that notice how the images are tilted. Um, I remember that uh, we'll we'll see how to fix that. All right, let's switch gears now. We've been talking a lot about machine perception services, so let's. Uh, so I took this sequence and then uploaded to our MPS service. It got processed and I downloaded the data. Now. Um, we'll see how easy it is to consume the data generated from the machine perception services. Here, our goal is to use Project ARIA tools uh, and to specifically look at the MPS APIs. Uh, most of it is one line. You just give it the file path and say load it, and everything just, just loads. In this first cell, what we will do is we will load the MPS point cloud, the point cloud that Jacob showed, uh, that's one of the sequences. And then um, the, the, the point cloud that you get from MPS, the machine perception services, uh, includes all the points. So here we will be filtering out some of the noisy points so that we can um, look at a cleaner point cloud. So again, just one liner. You load it. It loaded 2.9 million points. And then here's a filtering function that filters points, that rejects points based on some parameters. OK. So now here, we'll actually draw it. And then in the background, we'll also load the point cloud observations. There we go. OK. 
Um, does this look familiar? This is the same kitchen that you've been seeing <laughs> today, right? That's the stove, and some appliances, kitchen cabinets, countertop, etc. Super easy to load. Okay, let's go back. Now, I said that as part of the Samadins point cloud, we also expose all the observations. Like Jacob said, it includes which point was observed when, where in 3D, and on 2D, basically the SLAM image, and uh, at what point, like um, at what point in time. So uh, let's see. So here, we'll, what we will do is we will, I'll, I'll run this and then show you later. So here what's going on is, uh, uh, again, I'm creating the same data provider that we saw in the previous notebook. I'm telling it to only stream SLAM cameras because I want to draw the SLAM cameras and overlay the 2D observations on it. Again, I handpicked a duration that uh, looks cool. And here, here's the code. Essentially, we start streaming. We say, hey, if it's the left camera, draw the left image, get all the 2D points that are visible here, and then uh, block them. And the same thing for the right camera. All right, let's see it finished rendering here. So let's play it from the beginning. Oops, too fast. Okay, here, here you see this, the global point cloud here being projected onto 2D images, 2D SLAM images. Again, just few lines of code, super easy to use. Okay, so that was uh, global point clouds. Now, before we proceed further, I want to give a quick primer on the coordinate systems that we have. Uh, we have the world coordinate frame that everything is attached to. The MPS point cloud that we provide is, it, is in the global frame of reference. The MPS trajectory, which is the six top poses, um, those are, again, attached to the world, but they tell you the, the pose of the device at any point in time. And inside the device, we have an device as an arbitrary frame of reference, which is what uh, the poses are generated in. And then we have all these sensors, the SLAM camera, RGB cameras, um, and uh, uh, the central pupil frame, which is where the IGIS is coming from. Um, and then the IGIS that is generated from MPS is attached to the central pupil frame. Uh, now, I don't know about you, but any time I am using a new system, as soon as I get the trajectory, for example, here, I want to draw it. Um, first thing you draw is always an XYZ coordinate frame, color-coded, red, green, blue, right? And uh, you, you see if it's looking decent or not. So let's try to do that. So this is basically raw MPS poses visualized in 3D with the point cloud. Um, I will minimize the camera images here, not very interesting anymore. But that looks like somebody moving in the kitchen and cooking, doing stuff, right? Again, one line to load the poses, and then for rendering, you can use whatever package you want to use. There's plenty of them available. You've been hearing about ARIA's calibration. We're very proud of it. Uh, I want to just show you that we really mean it. Uh, it's really good. I call it watertight. It's, it's so accurate that there's really, really sub-pixel accurate. Um, Take a look at this image. This sh shows all the sensors and their coordinate frames uh, roughly on the ARIA device. Um, notice the SLAM camera here. The left SLAM camera is here. The right SLAM camera, the, this is the RGB camera, and then the right SLAM camera is here. Um, I've been working with some of the uh, university partners, and often they have trouble you know, getting all these sensors in the same frame of reference. I want to show you how easy it is using the uh, Project ARIA Tools calibration APIs to consume this and, and make sense of it. So what we're going to do here is, again, draw, use the same trajectory that we loaded. We'll replay it. But this time, uh, instead of just one uh, RGB coordinate axis, we'll see three frost terms for these three cameras. And uh, let's see if they're accurate. I just, I just ran it. OK. Let's zoom in here. Let's turn this off. Can everyone see it OK? Let's go somewhere here. Okay. 
something there. All right, let me zoom in. So what's going on here? I have three, I've basically applied the extrinsic calibration from ARIA on top of the trajectory. So let me turn them on one by one. You remember the left SLAM camera and RGB camera are close to each other. So that's the left SLAM camera. That's the RGB camera right next to it, right? And that's the right SLAM camera. And now if I play it, it's all gonna move together because it's rigidly attached. This is what we expect. So, so far it's telling me that the, the system, my system is working fine. The code I wrote has no bugs. <laughs> All right, that's, that's, the, that's a sample of uh, extrinsic calibration. So here, essentially, I use the APIs to the, the calibration API to get the extrinsic calibration of RGB camera, slam left and slam right, and I just applied that in the scene graph. Now, just like MPS uh, trajectory, all the extrinsic calibration is also always with respect to the device frame, which is arbitrary. Um, to get to any sensor, you can use the calibration uh, APIs to get the, its exact uh, pose. Cool. Uh, now that was extrinsic calibration. Let's look at how easy it is to use the intrinsic calibration. You remember the cameras were rotated and also distorted. So here, uh, what we'll do is we'll try to undistort uh, an RGB image and uh, display it again in the scene. You see how it's coming together slowly, right? All the pieces. Again, um, I will run this and then we'll talk over the code, what's going on. Here I query the device calibration API to give me the RGB cameras calibration. This is the intrinsic calibration. And I want to undistort it into a pinhole model. So here I just create a pinhole model based on certain width, height, and focal length. I deactivated all the other streams and only activated RGB stream. And as the data is being streamed as the images are coming in. I am undistorting it. I'm basically getting the raw image, rectifying it, which is basically undistortion using the pinhole model that we just defined above. And then we'll draw the original image and then we'll also draw the rectified image in the frustum um, to see how it looks. I will deactivate the SLAM and RGB cameras here. And this is essentially a similar frustum that you saw in some of the other videos. And if I play it, okay, it's starting to play. And then here on the left, you see um, the RGB feed. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna pause there. And you see how this is distorted, right? Okay, where is our RGB undistorted image? Okay, it's in there. So he, see, it's, it's now rotated correctly, thanks to the extrinsic calibration. And look, the distortion here is already corrected here. Th this line is straight. And I'm going to play over it a little bit. There. So now what you're seeing here is the camera, feed, uh, the poses, the point cloud, and everything coming together. Uh, and my mouse skills are not very good, especially on a trackpad. But uh, you, you get the idea. You're right. Cool, again, this was very simple. Just a few lines of code to load data, correlate everything in space and time, and put it together. Okay, the last piece that I want to share today is the MPS IGES. Um, again, by now you're probably used to it, just one line to load the eye gaze. This was again generated using machine perception services. And uh, because the, uh, let me scroll up here a little bit. The eye gaze is always expressed with respect to central, the central pupil frame, which is in, in between, it's, it's an imaginary frame of reference in between the two eyes. Um, so again, I load the extrinsic calibration between the CPF frame and the device frame. And then we, we stream the uh, eye tracking camera stream. And then for each timestamp, we grab the nearest eye gaze. We convert, the eye gaze is expressed as yaw and pitch angles today. So we convert into a 3D vector and then we draw it. You see this small offset, 
between where the pyramid starts and the eye gaze uh, origin. It is, it, it's, it's the CPF offset from the RGB camera. And if I turn on the, the RGB camera feed, oops, okay, they're gonna, that person is gonna come back, then it'll make sense, yeah. So you see how eye gaze precedes the user action. See, the person is al already looking before they turn. It's, it's very, very easy to visualize all of this. Now I want to pause here and, and see what we have here. For this to work well, a lot of things have to come together. Uh, the global point cloud for uh, context, the trajectory for telling where the user is, the intrinsic and extrinsic calibration, like this, this video in the frustrum will not look perspectively correct if any of the things go wrong. The calibration, the poses, MPS, I guess everything has to work correctly. And uh, this is all easily accessible. Essentially, everything I am running here is all open source code that we exposed today. And you also saw how, sh how quick and short it was in terms of uh, number of lines. Um, that's it for the demonstration. So thank you again for coming.